boxing is a very interesting martial arts for grapplers. Let me explain. Um, usually, like from all the fights I've seen in front of my eye, like on the streets outside of the school or something, it always starts with like very strong shoves, then like a big haymaker or a slap, and then you have like a big clinch. And then, you know, maybe like it either ends or like people come in and separate them, like from the stuff that I've seen. But it's usually it's that like if you let them go at it, it's usually that sequence is, you know, big shoves, um, then the slap, like big slaps, haymakers come in. Uh, if they're both still like if you get a KO, that's it. And then, uh, or if it, it might continue to a clinch, they both maybe tend to fall down. Then whoever gets top position is ground and pound, and that's it. That's like uh, your 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 street fighter with zero martial background type of sequence from what I've seen. But if you think about it, from the slaps and the shoves till the clinch, that's what a judoka needs to add to his arsenal or to his or her arsenal in order to um, have like. After that, then they can use their judo. But then getting in closely and then gripping or uh, not necessarily the best thing. Like even in MMA, you see them, then they throw a few hits and then maybe you know, they decided that, okay, that now it's a good time to, to show my grappling, whether it's Khabib or anyone else. But it's usually it's filling the distance with the striking, then getting closer for the grappling. Like that's the natural sequence of fighting. So that's what we miss in judo. We usually just get in, we grip, and then we start to grapple. Um, I think adding judo, uh, sorry, boxing, or any type of like maybe savat or kickboxing um, for your judo, I think that would complete the sequence. Yeah, yeah. I might be wrong, but that's from my observation. Yeah, I believe the same thing. I believe that you need some kind of um, form of striking. Yeah. Boxing would be would be great. You know, because like you said, like, um, you know, when, when people start off, it would actually be a lot faster when you think about it. Like if you already have a good judo background and then from there you want to learn some striking, um, going into Thai boxing, like it's, it'll take you a little bit longer, you know, to, yeah. to, to master because now you have, uh, you have so many things. You have like your, you have your hands, you have your elbows, you have the clinch, you have the knees, the kicks and yeah. all that. But you could, um, if you were in a hurry uh, to, com to, to, to complete your, your um, you know, to round off your skill set in boxing, because boxing hands are, you already have the footwork. You already have a little yeah. bit of, uh, you know, this. Aishabaki. Yeah, because of the, the kumikata, you know, you're used to, you know, you have these reflexes yeah. there. So just adding in boxing would be, um, would, would be, you would pick it up relatively quickly. And then from yeah. there, and when you get into a fight, you know, sometimes you're arguing, like, let's say you get into an altercation, like it's very rare that you're thinking, Oh, I'm going to kick him in the head. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, like, so, so, but the first thing that, that your first instinct is going to be to throw, to throw hands. So I yeah. think that that might be a better option, but yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. And you know, the best time to train boxing, like for, for all the judokas who are listening, uh, when you get injured, when you, when you, <laughs> Because injuries is part of of of, of yeah, the make the best of it by learning boxing. Exactly, because <laughs> let's say you hurt your knee or your ankle, you know, or you uh, you got your shoulder, you know. Well, maybe shoulder is not the best thing, but yeah. if you hurt anything else, like your knees or your lower back or your ankle or whatever, then go do boxing. <clears throat> Especially if yeah. you hurt your knees, because actually one of um one of uh one of the guys that I trained with, one of my teammates, he uh, he hurt himself, he hurt his knee at one point, and then he had to rehab it. So during that time, he couldn't do any judo. So what he did is he went off and he did boxing. So yeah. he, he ended up boxing for like a year, you know, a year or two. And, and now he has like a, he's really solid in boxing. Like I sparred against him and uh, I think he broke my rib or, or not broke my rib, but he, he, he busted up my right. rib. Oh, yeah. In, in, uh, but it was, it was, he wasn't going hard. It was just sometimes you, you, you lean into a punch and you weren't protecting yourself properly. And, and it was just kind of like a bad, uh, bad luck, but he messed it up my ribs, but all that to say that his boxing was, was, yeah. good. was very good, you know? So, so the best time to learn boxing would be when you hurt your knee. Uh, cause that's going to happen for sure. <laughs> yeah. Like make the most of your time instead of staying home and getting depressed that yeah, you, you can make uh, good use of it. Yeah, you're right. Or for example, go lift, 
gym or you know, do something productive uh, around your injury or active recovery. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and it's still it's still very fun. It's something that's useful, and you know, like you might as well learn it if you're if you're <laughs> concerned with uh, self defense. And you know, I yeah. think anybody who practices martial arts is somewhat concerned with self defense. 